So we've talked about the period of a wave, of a, um, of a wave or periodic motion. We said um, a period is how long it takes for a wave to pass by. We've talked about the wavelength of waves being the point from crust to crust, or if we have a longitudinal wave, how the wavelength is from one compression to the next compression. And so today what we want to do is we want to see how um, things like um, velocity of a wave, a period of a wave, and the wavelength of a wave are all related to each other. So we're going to start out with a period. And we already said that a period is how many seconds it takes for a wave to pass by. So you're relaxing at the beach with your family and you're watching the, the waves crash onto the beach and you see the first wave crash, crash onto the beach and then maybe it's three seconds later and you see the next wave crash onto the beach. So maybe the period is three seconds for every wave to pass by. Now, this is how many seconds it takes for a wave to pass by. The frequency of a wave is how many waves pass by in a second. So it's, it's really kind of backwards of this one. So here, if you said you had three waves pass, or if it took three seconds for a wave to pass by, that means that you would have a third of a wave passing by you in a second's time, okay? On the other hand, if you have um, maybe the waves are coming really, really, really fast, and maybe you have um, two waves um, passing by you in a second. That means it takes a half a second for one wave to pass by, okay? So in order to calculate the difference between those, we take what's called the reciprocal, which means we flip something upside down. So if I know the frequency, I can flip it upside down, and I can find the period. If I know the period, I can flip it upside down and I can find the frequency. So let me put some numbers with that um, so that that makes some sense. Let's say again that you're sitting on the beach and a wave passes by every second, every seven seconds. So a wave passes by every seven seconds. So is that the period? or is that the frequency? Well, that's how long it takes for one wave to pass by, so this is the period. So if I want to know the frequency, the frequency is one over the period, and so if I take one over seven seconds, so when you put that in your calculator, um, you're gonna take one divided by seven, and when you do that, you're going to end up with 0.14 and what are the units on that? Well, you'll notice that seconds is on the bottom and so the, the unit that we use for that is actually called a hertz or a per second is what it means. So frequency is always expressed in hertz and I usually abbreviate it with an HZ, okay? Now, let's do one that's flipped the other way. Let's say that um, your brother is flipping a rope and he's flipping it so that two waves pass by every second. So if two waves pass by every second, is that period or is that frequency? Well, it's how many waves pass by in a second, in one second. So this is actually the frequency. So the frequency here is two hertz. So what I then can, can turn around and calculate the period because the period is one over the frequency. And so one over two hertz, if I take one and divide it by two, that's gonna give me 0.5 and the units of that are gonna be seconds. So what does that tell me? Well, if two waves pass by every second, that means the period of the wave is a half a second. That means a whole wave will pass by me in a half a second if two waves are passing by me every second, okay? So um, if you're super good in algebra already and um, you can easily see those equations, you only have to write one of them down. If you're still in pre-algebra, um, and you may wanna write down both of those equations so you don't have to worry about flipping them around. Um, 
As you get better in algebra, it will be really easy for you to see. Uh, if you know this one, you'll know that one, but you may not be to that point yet. So what I would say is just write down both of those equations so that you have them both. Okay, the other thing that we want to talk about today is the relationship um, between velocity and frequency and wavelength. Now, it probably, um, I would hope, would make sense that um, that the faster the waves are moving, the higher the velocity is going to be. And the faster they're moving, um, the higher the frequency is going to be as well. Because if they're moving faster, you're going to see more waves moving by you in a specific amount of time. Okay. Um, also, if, um, if the frequency is going to get higher, a lot of times if the velocity is going to stay the same, then what that means is that your wavelength is going to have to go down. So if you think about that, if the waves on the beach are super, super close together, then they have a short wavelength, and so likely you're going to see more of them pass by in a short amount of time, okay? So velocity equals frequency times the wavelength. Now, you already know that frequency is in hertz, which is per second, Wavelength is going to be probably in meters, and so then your velocity is going to be in meters per second, just like we've always seen it before. Once again, if you're super good at algebra, um, and it's easy for you to see that I can get this equation and this equation from this one, you can just write down one of them. Um, but if, if you haven't gotten this far in math yet, then what I would tell you to do is write down all three of these, and then whatever you're trying to find, you'll have the equation um, right there and it'll be easier for you to pull out. So if you're trying to find velocity, you're gonna use this one. If you're trying to find frequency, you'll use this one. And if you're trying to find wavelength, uh, you're gonna use this one. So the first example I wanna look at is actually um, from your textbook. It's example 17-2. Um, the other two examples in the book are probably a, um, a little bit more difficult than what we're going to be tackling in this particular course, but we will look at 17-2. It says, waves that are 1.1 meter long pass a pier. If three and a half waves pass each second, how fast are the waves moving? Okay, so um, if, I, if it's asking me how fast the waves are moving, it's asking for velocity. So therefore, the velocity is going to be the frequency times the wavelength. And what did it tell me the frequency was? Well, it said three and a half um, waves are passing by every second. And so that means the frequency is 3.5 hertz. And it also told me that the wavelength uh, was 1.1 meters. So I'll plug those in there like that. And then if I take 3.5, times 1.1, um, that's going to give me a velocity of 3.85, if I multiply those together, meters per second, because remember hertz is per second, and so if you multiply meters per hertz, you get units of meters per second, okay? Um, we'll do one more example. Um, let's say that um, a wave travels at, Let's see, at three meters per second, and it has a wavelength of half a meter. And I want to know um, what the frequency is going to be. Okay? So if I am asked to find frequency, then I'm going to go up to my um, list of equations and I'm going to use this one because that's what I'm trying to find. So if frequency equals velocity over wavelength, if it travels at three meters per second, that's the velocity. That's how fast it's going. So I'm going to have three meters per second um, divided by the wavelength, which is 0 0.5 meters. And so you can see that your meters are going to cancel out and you're going to be left with a per second, which is hertz, which is the units that I should have for frequency. And so if I take three and I divide it by 0.5, that will give me an answer of six hertz. So what does that mean? Well, a frequency of six hertz tells me that I'm going to have six waves passing by every second if they're moving at three meters per second uh, with the wavelength of a half a meter. 
Okay, so you will be do, getting some practice today calculating um, period and frequency and um, then doing some velocity um, of waves as well.